Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making Kono Hana Sakuya Hime. Um, I'm sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> um, but she is like the goddess of Mount Fuji in Japan. Um, she's also known to be like the fairy of the cherry blossom. So being as spring is on its way, I figured I would make something really pretty for my channel. <laughs> um, I do apologize that I sound awful because I currently have the horrendous COVID, <laughs> but I'm well on the mend. Um, I'm starting this project with painting just a standard size canvas. Um, so if you're not interested in the painting section, although there is a lot of paint in, in this project, um, just sort of skip forward to about 10 minutes. That's where um, my sculpting starts. All of my paints are Arteza acrylic paints, except from like my white and my black, which are Dala Rowley, Dala Rowley, <laughs> the usual stuff, the ones that I can't say, these ones. Um, I'll put a list of what colours I'm using down below. Um, I wanted this painting to be as simple as possible, so I decided to try and kind of use stuff that's in like my kitchen and stuff like that. So I found like this painter's brush that I'm using to like blend my paints with. Um, I later go on to make like the clouds using a kitchen sponge so I just kind of wanted to use things that you generally would find within your household and see that you can kind of create I don't know little pieces of art for yourself using the materials that you have you don't need to go out and spend a fortune on like specialist sponges and all these fancy type of things literally all I'm using is paint acrylic paint and like things that I found. <laughs> To create the snow on the mountaintop, I just literally put a little bit of white paint onto a palette knife, I think that's what these are, things are called, um, and then slowly dragged it down. I did this on top of um, the blue paint whilst it was still wet so that I could get like a nice blend and then um, went back in later on when it was dry to add like a more pristine white snow over the top of it. I thought it just created a nice little variation in like tones between like snowy mountain top and mountain <laughs> it's the best way i can describe it i'm not very good at describing things <laughs> to create these pretty wispy looking little clouds i'm literally just cut up a tiny piece of kitchen sponge um and it wasn't even an expensive kitchen sponge i did my usual and i like bought the cheapest of the cheap so um yeah you can do this theme with just kitchen sponges you don't need to go and buy expensive equipment so please don't use what you have <laughs> So it was at this point that I kind of realised that uh, my Mount Fuji didn't have a reflection in the lake below. Um, I'm just going to ignore that horrendous <laughs> problem and cover it with um, my polymer clay in a bit. Hopefully people don't really notice, but uh, yeah, my, my Mount Fuji has no reflection. It is that magical that it's managed to hide itself in the water <laughs> and has nothing to do with the fact that I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs>
after adding in all of the little ripples to the water, um, I wanted the lake to look quite calm and still and tranquil as I imagine Japan would look. Um, it's one of the places on this planet that I will visit before I die. I just, I need to see the cherry blossom. Like, you don't understand how much I love the idea of all of the Japanese cherry blossom all going at once. Sorry, I am procrastinating. It's time to get out the Super Sculpey. I cheated a little bit today. Um, instead of sculpting the face like I normally would, I thought I would show like an easier method. Um, if you're a beginner, this is a great way to start and have like a really cool sculpt still um, without like fussing over creating like really, really fine details. So I bought these molds off of Amazon. I will leave a link in the description as always. Um, and literally I just pushed my Super Sculpey into the mold and then popped it back out. You have to be quite slow when you're removing the mold because otherwise you kind of warp the face. Although I think you probably could bake it in the mold and then perhaps, um, I don't know, sand off the clay at the back afterwards. Um, I'm just impatient and I didn't want to put them in the oven. <laughs> um, I did notice that this mold, the nose didn't come out great. So I had to do a little bit of detailing afterwards and actually this isn't the face that I end up using I use a different mold later on but I thought I'd show you the process of how I made the face anyway um however this isn't the face that I end up using <laughs> just to complicate things and I know same as always but yeah I wanted to show you the basic process So um, from this process, you might see that um, I've kept things as simple as possible. I won't be sculpting hands or anything else like that today. I wanted to make a really, really great sculpture and a really, really pretty sculpture without having loads and loads of complicated parts to the process. Um, because I find even for me, sculpting hands and faces can be difficult. So if you're new to this, this is a really great way to start. Um, so I'm literally creating a sculpture that has no hands, that has no feet. Um, that the face is created using a mold um it's kind of there are ways about cheating <laughs> to create a really cool sculpture um just a word of warning if you are going to bake your piece on your canvas like i am doing right here if you're going to use the bacon bond adhesive on the clay to the canvas um anywhere that you remove clay later but the glue was will stain the canvas um it will leave like big white patches behind so be very careful if you're going to use this method that you don't end up with the bacon bond in places where you want there to be like canvas painted <laughs> because it won't be like that when it's finished um i found that out um when i cut this section out here there was a bit of glue attached to it um you can't see it right now but there's like little faded white lines along the edge of her skirt that became really white later on it's kind of bleached the paint out so I ended up having to find ways of hiding it, which I did with a secondary skirt anyway, which is what I was planning to do, obviously, because it wasn't because of my mistake that I had to make more. <laughs> um, but yeah, I tried to keep the sculpt as simple as possible so that, um, you know, even beginners could follow this. I don't know, is it a tutorial? I guess it's a tutorial. I don't like it to be tutorial. I kind of just... I'm sharing my hobby. <laughs> um, but yeah, you like anybody can do this. So please give it a go. And I would love to see if you did. So, you know, just 
drop me a link down in the comments to like your Facebook pages, whatever, or tag me in them um, at Pixie Wolf Designs and I will have a look, honestly. I love people's artwork. Um, I've had a couple of people tag me in their stuff before and honestly, it's so nice to see other people's work. So please do share it with me if you can do over on like Facebook, Instagram, you know, the usual tags at Pixie Wolf Designs will you know make it to me that way and I would love to see your work so please do share To make my fabric um, look fabricy, um, all I do is like roll out little worms of clay and I place them all over where I think the material would look like it's falling and draping um, and then sort of blend them in. If you're struggling to figure out where to put your creases and folds, then just literally just get a bit of material, hang it over a chair, have a look at how it falls to the floor and then try and replicate that. It's a good way to have references. Um, this is the part where I decided that I didn't like the original face and <laughs> I just felt it looked really worried. So head chopping happened. <laughs> um, I made a different mold because this pack comes with four different faces. So I used a different mold of the face, exact same process, just changed the head out. Um, I feel like she has a more natural looking face rather than an anime face although i love anime don't get me wrong i absolutely loved it um i just wanted a more i don't know human looking face <laughs> So because I have like the dreaded plague, <laughs> um, I've literally got my house airing out like really bad. So my clay is actually quite hard to work with. So I was using a little bit of baby oil to soften the clay a little bit so that I could, um, I don't know, get some of the tool marks out because they were quite difficult to blend out just using my standard tools. Normally in my standard temperature house, I didn't have the issue, but um, 
because it was so cold. <laughs> it's either be cold or try and infect the rest of my house. So I've been trying to stay out of the way <laughs> and not like, I don't know, infect everyone. So yeah, my clay was really, really cold. <laughs> so if you're struggling to mold your clay because it's you're in a colder temperature, um, baby oil to the rescue. It really does work. You don't need to buy expensive clay softeners. A bit of baby oil does trick. So I went back to my kitchen once again to see what I could find in regards to making the six kajillion billion flowers that I needed for this project. Um, and I happened to come across these teeny tiny little flower cutters that are, well, were <laughs> used for um, cake making. Obviously these ones won't be now, they are now for clay making. <laughs> um, but I did find where I bought them from, so I've left a link in the description below. Um, if you're going to make anything like this, you are definitely going to want to buy cutters because doing it by hand will take you six million years. <laughs> um, I then went on to make my red crowned crane, I think that's what they're called. Um, they're a bird that can be found um, in Japan, in China and Russia, I think, that I read they came from. But um, over in Japan, they're classed as quite a sacred bird. So I thought I would add this beautiful bird to my piece just as um, something else other than cherry blossoms to look at and uh, I think he came out really really pretty and I'm glad that I spent the time making him so I thought I'd show you the process of making him as well. To speed up the feather making process time I am using just a small circular cutter and kind of digging side of it into the clay to create um, it's kind of like a scaly feathery texture um, I wanted to do that as opposed to one of my older videos when I made the chocobo and moogle where I literally spent hours making one feather at a time um, there are quicker, quicker methods <laughs> although it is one of my earlier sculpts so you know I was still learning I'm still learning to this day so you know, if I figure out a new technique, I will share it with you as soon as I have figured it out. <laughs> um, where it comes to the crane's beak, I am literally using one of my old claws that I made for a dragon out of Milliput. <laughs> I had a spare claw. Um, I literally keep everything that I ever make that I don't use. So um, my crane's beak is actually a claw. <laughs> um, but you could obviously just sculpt a beak. I was just being lazy about it. <laughs>
So to try and save some time, I went out and bought some like pretty pink clay. This is Fimo. Um, I didn't really save any time though. This this process still took three days, <laughs> to be fair. Um, the initial thought was so that I didn't have to paint all of these tiny little cherry blossoms individually. Um, however, I still did go on to paint every cherry blossom individually. I put like a little bit of yellow in the center of each flower. And then of course, just to make things more complicated, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to put these tiny little pearl beads. And it does look really, really pretty and I'm glad that I did it, but just if you're gonna do it, expect to be there for days, <laughs> absolute days doing this. <laughs> Once I finally finished all of these flowers, which did take me far longer than I wanted to spend on them, I could finally put um, this in the oven. Um, I did it to package specifications. However, I put it into a cold oven and um, I tried my best to kind of weight down, well, not weight down, I don't know how to describe it. I put something behind the canvas to hold the weight of the clay behind it just so the weight as it was baking didn't overstretch the canvas um, i did it to the specifications on the packaging for my clay um, and i did it for slightly shorter time just so that i didn't end up baking or over baking the fimo the pink clay because uh, i don't use colored clay very often i'm really conscious about burning it <laughs> because i don't want it to change like color <laughs> um but yeah, then after that I went on to make my life even longer and I spent a whole day putting in these tiny little beads in every single flower. <laughs> So originally I did go on to paint her dress in this red. I thought I'd show it to you mainly because you'll see the red before I go on to change it to a completely different colour. I changed it mainly because um, I managed to make her like a 1970s curtain. It, <laughs> it was impressive. I, I managed to create something horrendous <laughs> first. So I did go on to repaint it, but I thought I would show you the process of me correcting it because uh, sometimes people make mistakes when they're painting and then they think oh I've ruined it and when actually you haven't all you've got to do is prime it again I went in with full white and started again and I'm much happier with like the second rendition of her dress the first one you know I was quite impressed with myself I managed to create something that should never have been seen on this planet in the first place because I honestly can't stand 70s print <laughs> Nope.
Once I've finished adding all of these tiny little beads, um, which you can see I am literally just dipping into some glue and then sticking into the flowers. It looks simple, just takes ages. <laughs> um, our goddess is complete. Kono Hana Sakuya Hime <laughs> um, is all done. So I'm glad that you managed to make it to the very end of my video. I do hope that you have enjoyed watching. Um, please do let me know down in the comments what you think. I would love to know your thoughts on, you know, these processes or anything that I could have done differently. Please do let me know. Um, and thank you very much, guys. I guess I will see you in the next one. I will see you later. Bye.